Happy Saturday. Stayed up a bit too late last night. My friend Cody, that I hadn't seen in a pretty long time, came over and we had a really good time just laughing, talking, maybe even keeping the neighbors a little awake a little bit too much. I hope not. <laughs> so I'm a little sleepy this morning. We'll get some coffee. got wind and the neighbors across the way over there are making Saturday morning noise. They're working on yard work or renovations. I don't know. They're doing something over there. It's funny when you stop to just listen to the sounds around you. At night I would have thought that was a cricket, but I think that's a like a tree frog or something. Having a little trouble getting moving this morning. Brian woke me up this morning on purpose because he has a, a job this weekend helping keep some friends of ours animals. They have a dog and cats and a bunch of goats. We got over there to their house. They're a little bit further out in the country here than, than we are. We're, we're technically not in the country. A couple blocks outside the city limits. Kind of have the best of both worlds, country and city. So this week, today is, what is today's date? August 15th, wrapping up week 33 of 2020. It has been a week. It was not near as busy of a week as last week. Well, busy or, it was diff it's different than last week. Last week, I had the whole week off. This week, I'm back to work starting Tuesday. Oh, oh, before I go too far, word of the week. This is funny. Brian gave me the word of the week this week, and it's uh, one that I was like, well, that's not new. The word of the week is dope. And for anybody that grew up in the 80s, 90s, you know, this is, I mean, probably even further be before the 80s. I don't know. I'm not sure exactly where it started. I guess I'll have to look that up, put a little bit of that in here. Dope just means really cool. Sunday morning, I overslept. I wanted to get up a little bit earlier, get moving, but I didn't. Relaxed all day. Then that night, we had our last, our final pool night, night swim. Sunday night, as we were leaving the place, this is the Berkeley place, which was our Airbnb place. We closed on it on Monday. So Sunday night, as we were leaving, I was walking around, turning off lights, you know, picking up any last little things that we had sitting there that were ours. And uh, as I was doing that, I was just, you know, flipping off a light going, last time, next light, last time. And uh, it was, it was bittersweet because we have a lot of memories in that house, but it was also a place that, uh, oh, cicadas are getting started this morning. It's August. So it was bittersweet. Yeah, the place was just, you know, it's, it's, it's always a mixture of happy, sad when you leave a place that you have a lot of connection to. But the place was also very stressful for us as, a, as an Airbnb because it was more work than we had wanted to do on an Airbnb place. Like I said before, if we ever do that again, we're going to do something a lot simpler, something we can hire the cleaning when we want to go out of town and stuff like that. We couldn't do that with the Berkeley place, mainly because the pool was just required a lot of manual care that's harder to get somebody to do. Monday, we had the closing on Berkeley in the afternoon. We had meeting with our former business partner, signing over our side of that particular business. That was that was good, but it was challenging. We learned a lot. Um, hope we can help others with the things that we learned. And if and when we try something like that again in the future, there's a lot of stuff that we'll know how to do better. On Tuesday, it was my first day back to work after being off for 10, 12 days, something like that. I'm so glad I got a chance to use some of that staycation time to really just enjoy having a staycation. Tuesday night, we ordered in Chipotle. We all love Chipotle. Now, we would prefer to have gone inside the restaurant, but with the COVID stuff, it's, it's not the same. 
but it will be again someday. That evening, since we were all at home and trying to social distance as much as possible, we sat around and played Jackbox Party on the Switch, no, on the PlayStation. We have it on both of the platforms, PlayStation 4 and the Nintendo Switch. It's, it's so much fun to just play a, a goofy game like that with the kids and just let our hair down, which that doesn't mean anything in our family because Jill's the only person that has hair that could be put up but just to just to relax a little bit and be goofy with each other a lot of fun curiosities for this week there are quite a few actually i got thinking about here in springfield missouri the birthplace of route 66 many many people know already what route 66 is or was before uh, interstate 44 took over most of that route between chicago and is it LA? Yeah, something like that. Anyway, west coast to Chicago, Route 66 was the, its heyday was in the 50s and 60s, you know, that sort of time frame. It was iconic for getting out on a road trip. So I got curious about that this week and I learned some things about how Route 66, that number wasn't the first number that they were asking for from the federal government for a roadway, but they eventually landed on it because it was not, even though it wasn't their first choice, it had a nice ring to it. Get your kicks on Route 66. Wednesday, I started talking with my friend Cody. He's the one that came over last night. Cody's very much, Cody's 20 years younger than me. So it's, it's, it's kind of strange. It's an unlikely friendship, but we, we really enjoy each other's perspectives. We have a lot of things that we really click on and then some things that we really appreciate each other's differing perspective. On Wednesday, I had texted him and said, uh, or maybe he had texted me, I don't know. Anyway, we ended up communicating. We wanted to have a shared playlist on Spotify because I wanted from him, he loves EDM music and I love the mixture of EDM and the dance alternative music of the 80s. And so he started building a collaborative playlist on Spotify. We call it High Octane because one of my important goals with this this playlist of music is that I wanted something that would be high energy so that I can listen to it while I'm working be something that you know when especially in the afternoon lull of the day to uh, raise the energy in the day had some weird dreams on Thursday night. Not, I mean, I, I guess, well, yeah, one of the curiosities I was working on over the week was I'm thinking about electric scooters. I think it'd be neat to get one of the newer electric scooters just for enjoying going up and down trails when the weather's nice. I just like the idea too of being able to just, just kind of tool around and enjoy open air without a lot of, I'm not a motorcycle person and these scooters, they have nice distance on them, 10, 20 miles on a single charge and they go 9 to 18 miles an hour. So I guess the dream that I had on Thursday night is not all that weird because I just had a dream about going around on a scooter all over the place. Just enjoying that. Friday, played around with some editing of some 360 video of when we had our last big pool day. I tried this camera. We did a bunch of underwater splashing and, and underwater things with this camera. Some of them turned out pretty cool. The various things that I looked at this week got me interested in 3D printing. Will I ever get into that? I don't know, maybe, maybe not. It's very interesting to me because I like to tinker with things and I like to build stuff. You know, this little thing that I built for the camera is, you know, would be better more solid, more professional looking, and maybe not more solid, but more professional looking if it was 3D printed instead of the carving of a piece of plastic that I did with a Dremel. Although it is very solid. I mean, it's it's on there. It's not coming loose, so it's gonna work well. It just would be more professional. And also with 3D printed stuff, if you build something that is really useful for people and that a lot of people want it, you could sell it, make a, a stream of income, however big or small, I don't know. I was really hoping this week and, and every week, I'm, I'm always hoping to get more stuff of what's going on in the boys' lives, but we're getting to the end of their summer vacation the, other than sitting around and watching TV and playing games and the occasional running around outside, they're, they're not really doing all that much right now, so there's not that much to cover. Jill and I are looking for, you know, we're, we're looking forward to getting more involved in things in the community, but the COVID stuff is kind of putting that on a, on a back burner, but we really want to get involved in, in helping people in our community and, and that type of thing. So there'll be more of that. Oh, speaking of, I got my new t-shirt. 
Um, can you see that? That is from a very famous episode. Very famous. Famous to people that know Mr. Rogers. He, he had a, a way of touching people's lives where he was talking to children, but he was also talking to adults. What he did with this particular episode was he took a character on his show, Officer Clements, I think is, was the character's name, who is a black man who is a police officer. And this is way back in the late 60s, early 70s, so it seems like it really fits into the, today's climate of, of things that we've got going on, but this was way back then. And what he did was he did something very simple. He just said, hi, Officer Clemens, come on in. This is the way I remember it anyway. He said, come on in, it's a, such a hot day. You know, I've got this little swimming pool out, outside here by my house and, and I just thought maybe we could just cool off a little bit and put our feet in the pool and they both take their shoes off and they have their feet in the pool and they're enjoying the cool water. And it was that simple. But what Mr. Rogers was doing was he was making a very strong statement to the world and to children in particular because he knew how much they needed to hear this message. My memory of it is that it was very simple. And I got another one too, I'll show that one at some point. That one has some text on it too. It says something along the lines of, if you can be anything in the world, be kind. And I think that's a message that people need to hear more of these days. So the other big thing about Friday yesterday was my grandpa Chuck who passed away back in May of 2016. Yesterday would have been his 99th birthday. And so I made a post on Facebook with a little snippet of the interview that I did with him. That interview always helps me recenter. One of the major reasons why I do these videos here is because I want to give my kids and my grandkids and my great great grandkids. I want to give them a gift of a glimpse into, a regular glimpse, into what our family was like back in 2020. We have the technology to do this and all of you out there have the technology to do at least some little video. You have a cell phone. Almost everyone has a cell phone of some sort that they can set it down, prop it up on a you know bookshelf or whatever, and get at least the simplest of video asking your grandparents or someone you love stories about their life. And when they're gone, trust me, if you haven't experienced this yet, when they're gone, you're going to cherish that simple little video. Even if the audio isn't perfect, even if the video isn't perfect, you're gonna absolutely love that you can have a little snippet that you can enjoy and pass on through the generations. Yeah, that's pretty much it for week 33 of 2020. We'll see you next week.